the Bible opens with its foundations about the meaning, morality, origin, and destiny of life. It opens in the book of Genesis, wherein God, we can picture God walking the stage and announcing himself in the beginning, God. Sa so, umpisa pa lang, Diyos na siya. The creator, the owner, and you and I are the properties of God. Pag-aari tayo ng Diyos. At ito dapat ang unang alam mo tungkol sa Kanya at unang dapat malaman tungkol sa ating sarili. Because without proper understanding of these foundations, there will be an ending quest for the meaning of life. At nakita din natin na itong invisible God so desires to have a personal relationship with man and woman. Kaya naman bumaba siya sa hardin ng Eden at ipinakita ang sarili niya sa tao. He walks with them. Magandang umaga po mapagpalang linggo sa ating lahat. Ako po si Pastor Lovina Gibao ng World International Ministries, Quezon City. Nasimulan po natin ang ating bagong serya sa taong 2022 following the liturgical calendar na binaba sa atin ng ating organization ng WIN. Sinimulan natin ito sa aklat ng Genesis. Genesis, the beginning. We started with Genesis 1. Last Sunday we had Genesis 2. We had a conversation about the joyful morning when the man and the woman were put together by God to be one. Okay? The first marriage, which represents the union of Christ and His church. At dito nga, sa Eden, um, binigay ng Lord ng lahat ng magagandang regalo, lahat ng magagandang blessings. There was a perfect life before sin came into the world. So, this is a place where the blessings is known, where the purpose is given. Binigyan niya ng work ang tao. Where the partnership between the man and the woman was given and the presence of God. Ang end ng chapter 2 ng Genesis, I hope na nabasa niyo na rin po ito, makikita natin that man is enjoying a perfect life. Hindi kailangan magtrabaho para may makain kasi pipitas lang. Pipitas lang ang tao. At ito ang buhay na puno ng galak at blessings. So when God finished His creation, God said it was very good. That includes people. But who would say it's still a very good world now? Very few would claim that. Konti lang siro masasabi na napakaganda pa ng mundo ngayon. Something is out of order. Now, what went wrong and where did, where did it go wrong? It all starts in Genesis 3. So this will be our passage for today. And it was read to us earlier in the scripture reading. Okay? Something has gone terribly wrong. Ang tao, in the end of Genesis chapter 3, ang tao nasa labas na ng garden or garden. Nasa labas na siya ng lugar kung nasaan ang blessings ng Lord. In verse 24, the man is driven out. He was excluded. Malayo na sa tree of life. And he is now struggling a hostile life, environment, to make a life for himself. He experiences pain, guilt, fear, and a lot more. At ito ang dahilan kung bakit ganito ang mundo natin ngayon. So Genesis 3, dito natin makikita. Dito natin malalaman kung bakit ganito ang mundo natin ngayon. Kung bakit ganito ang buhay natin, bakit miserable, bakit puno ng sakit at sakit. So kung hindi natin alam at nauunawaan ng Genesis 3, hindi rin natin mauunawaan kung bakit ganito tayo. Bakit ganito palagi ang naririnig natin balita sa TV at radyo. Every day when we open the news, we hear bad news. Dito sa Genesis 3, binigay ng Lord ang kanyang explanation 
kung bakit ganito ang mundo ngayon na ginagalawan natin. So, let me um, read to you the passage in Genesis. But before that, I hope na ito ang maiwan sa ating mensahe as we study along Genesis 3 or ma maalala natin, deeper understanding of the bad news gives you better appreciation of the good news. The darkest morning, the fall out of man. Now let me read to you the passage in Genesis 3. Binasa na to kanina in Tagalog, but I have here an English version. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say, You must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, You must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her. Imagine niyo to, ah, si Adan, katabi lang, kasama lang ni Eva, habang si Eva nakikipag-usap dito sa serpent. And he ate it. Verse 7, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you from all livestock, livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put in enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. You will crush your head, and you will strike his head. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. So Adam, he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you will return. Adam named his wife Eve because... She would become the mother of all the living. Before we continue, let's ask God's wisdom. Father, we commit to you our conversation today. May we hear from you, O Lord. We pray that you will also search our hearts, any hurdles, distractions in our hearts and in our minds, Lord. We, re we rebuke them and we ask that you help us 
receive your word fully for all the instructions that you want us to do, Lord God. Pakalinisan niyo po ang aming mga isip at puso, Panginoon, at patawarin sa aming mga pagkukulang at pagkakasala sa inyo. Ang aming panalangin is, ay yung gabay, Panginoon, na kami ay tuwirang makinig, tuwirang sumunod sa iyong mga pinapagawa sa amin. Salamat, Panginoon, itong aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Deeper understanding of the bad news gives you better appreciation of the good news. Dito makikita natin sa ating binasa yung diagnosis and prescription. Diba sa isang um, sa isang may sakit, lalo na pag may, nah- may nararanasan kang sintomas, hindi ka kagad umiinom ng kahit anong gamot, not unless may diagnose kung ano yun. Lalo na ngayon, di ba uso po ang sakit? Marami ang nagkakatrangkaso. Hindi nga natin alam, baka yung iba dyan is talagang symptoms na siya ng COVID. Okay? At tina, um, iniinuman natin ng mga first aid na gamot para lang bumuti ang pahiramdam. Okay? But, may mga pagkakataon na hindi pa rin gumagaling kasi hindi na diagnose ng mabuti. So you cannot know how to get um, well, how to get right, until you have a strong understanding kung paano or ano ang problema mo o ano ang sakit mo. So mahirap pong inumin ang prescription na ibinigay ng walang tamang diagnosis. So meron tayong dalawang parte dito sa ating binasa, the diagnosis and prescription. Mahirap alamin kung anong dapat maguhin anong dapat gawing tama kung hindi mo alam kung ano yung naging mali mo. Okay? Ano nga bang naging problem? From the passage that we have read, it opens the third player in the existence. Sino yung third player doon? Satan. Which comes in the garden in the form of snake. So alam natin yung pinanggalingan ni Satan. Hindi naman talaga actually siya isang snake. Na every time you see a snake, it's already Satan. Siguro na possess lang yung snake na yun. Because we know that the that Satan is a spiritual being. He's invisible and he has to possess himself into something visible. At ang sinabi lang ng Bible na itong si Satan. Once naging isa siyang angel of light, he was part of the creation of heaven. Spiritual creation. But he was inflated, he, he being inflated with pride and he rebelled against God. So naging rebelyoso, kaya tinulog mula sa langit. Alamin natin kung ano yung, napaka-importante na alam natin kung paano kumilos, paano ang strategy ni Satan para tayo natatalo. Kasi maraming, pa, bagay, maraming panahon at maraming pagkakataon na feeling natin we are defeated by Satan's scheme and strategy. Na nagiging frustrated tayo kasi paulit-ulit natin ginagawa yung mga bagay na hindi naman dapat natin ginagawa. Okay? Makikita natin dito sa passage yung strategy ng satanas, ng kalaban. At dapat aware po tayo dito. First, he gives us confusion. Ito yung strategy niya. Sabi pa niya, did God really say? Ito yung enemy's first word eh. Ito yung pinakaunang sinabi niya kay Eva. His tactic is to question God's word. Nagbibigay siya ng doubt. Isip. Itong utak natin, itong mind natin, ang unang tinitira o unang target ni Satan. Hanggang sa magbunga ito ng desire sa puso at eventually magbunga ng action, disobedience kay Lord. At itong strategy ni Satan, hanggang ngayon ginagawa pa rin niya. He even did the same strategy against Jesus Christ. Remember when Jesus was tempted at the wilderness? Sabi pa niya, if you are the Son of God, diba? if, be sure, parang sinasabi niya, sure ka ba talaga na Son of God ka? The same tactics he is using to you at ito, 
ang sasabihin niya, ito ba talaga ay galing sa word ng Lord? Sigurado ka ba talaga na sinabi ng Lord yan? Did God really say? Ha? So, dapat alam natin yung taktika ni Satan. Pangalawa, meron siyang ginagamit na presumption. You will not surely die. May twist siyang ginagamit. Tinitwist niya. Sure ka ba talaga na mangyayari yan pag sinuway mo si Lord? E paano kung hindi? Surely exaggerated lang ang consequences na yan na mamamatay ka. Hindi ka talaga actually mamamatay. So Satan, he even used the same strategy to Jesus when um, the first attempt failed. If you are the son of God, na fail siya dun kasi si Jesus, you know, Jesus is God and he can really win against Satan. Sabi pa niya, since you are the son of God, you can do whatever you want. Tumalon ka kasi di ka papabayaan ng Lord. Look at the corruption here. Presumption. Ah, hindi ka talaga mamamatay, okay lang yan. He misinterprets God's word. And we must be careful. Pangatlo, ambition. You will be like God. Knowing good and evil pag kinain mo yan. Huwag ka lang makontento na you're just being created like the image of God. Why can't we be like God? Why can't we be God? Bakit hinahayaan mo lang si Lord sabihin sa'yo kung anong dapat gawin at paano mamuhay? Nalilimitahan ka eh. Sa pagiging Christian mo yan, marami kang hindi nagagawa. Mas maganda ma-experience mo din to. Buhay na to. Why don't you be God? Be the God of your life. Sundin mo kung anong gusto mo, kung anong ibig mo. Walang makakapigil sa'yo. Tingnan mo, the ambition there to be like God. I remember in Celebrate Recovery, the first, first principle there, realize I'm not God. And realize dapat natin hindi tayo Diyos. Wala tayong control actually sa buhay na ito. We cannot even control other people. Kahit yung sarili natin, hindi natin makontrol. Nagagawa pa rin natin yung mga bagay na hindi dapat natin gawin. Okay? Same strategy na ginamit niya kay Jesus, itong si Satan. Think of what you can become. Talikuran mo yung faith mo kasi hinaharangan niya yung mga bagay na gusto mong maranasan. So let us be aware of Satan's strategy. Sabi pa nga sa 2 Corinthians 2.11, In order that Satan may not, might not outwit us, outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. We must not be unaware. Ibig sabihin, alam mo dapat paano kumilos ang kalaban. Well, since alam mo na paano siya kumilos, dapat may ready kang defense. The shield of faith. The breastplate of righteousness. The helmet of salvation. The shoes of truth. And ang ating offensive weapon against Satan is the word of God. Dun, yun dapat eh, nakasuot sa atin yan para hindi tayo matalo. So maging mapagmatsyag tayo na baka nasa isipan na po natin na tayo yung nagda-doubt na. Meron na tayong mga presumption, akala natin yun ang tama pero hindi pala. At meron na tayong ambition sa ating puso na gawin ang mga gusto nating gawin kasi ayaw nating nalilimitahan tayo ayaw nating nakokontrol tayo ng Lord gusto natin sariling buhay my life, my rule sabi pa nga nung mga ibang nagsasabi niya nakikita ko yun minsan sa mga walls ng Facebook na tinasabi okay lang, okay lang gawin yan, okay lang magkasala magna-repent pa lang ako mamaya see the the corruption there na sometimes subtle lang eh, na hindi mo akalain way na pala ni Satan yun para tayo yung malinlang at alam natin kung saan patungo yan. Distraction. In Genesis 3, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God and he was, as he was walking in the garden in the pool of the day, dito na bumagsak ang tao sa kasalanan. They disobey the Lord, they eat from the tree that gives knowledge about evil and good, talagang lantaran ang pag nila kay Lord. At dun, nagtago sila from the Lord God. Saan sila nagtago? Dun sa mga 
puno in the garden. But the Lord had called to the man, Adan, man, where are you? Kung mapapansin po natin, sa babae unang nakipag-usap, or sa babae nakipag-usap si Satan. Nabasa natin kanina. At yung babae lang din yung nakikipag-usap sa kanya, sumasagot sa mga tanong niya. So, maaaring ang dahilan is, siguro alam ni Satan na women are more trusting at madaling magtiwala. And more, more importantly, Satan is subverting God's order and treating Eve as if he was the head of the house. So, meron na talagang pagtitwist na ginagawa si Satan dito. At itong si Adan, he was just actually standing by her, by her side, and never opened his mouth once. Si Adam yung nakipag-argue kay Satan. Kung si Adam yung nakipag-argue kay Satan, dapat kasi he was the one who received the instruction of God directly. Si Adam yung direktang nakarinig nun. And Adam, who was supposed to protect his wife, kept his mouth closed. Kaya nung nagkasala sila, ang una nilang ginawa ay nagtago. Siyempre, hinanap ng Diyos. Adam, where are you? He called to the man, Adam, or where are you? Bakit kaya sila hinanap ng Lord? Eh, di ba all-knowing si Lord? Di ba alam ni Lord kung nasan sila? Actually, it was not a fundamental question of location. Kasi alam naman ng Lord kung nasan sila. But it was a question of position. Ikaw ang leader. Ikaw ang head of the house. Ikaw ang binigyan ko directly ng instruction. Nasaan ka? Where are you? Adam had abandoned his position. So, the missing man has become the crisis of the day. Kahit ngayon, maraming mga lalaki na inaabandon yung position nila. Not the missing male, but the missing man. Maraming male eh, pero konti lang ang totoong lalaki. The one who stands in the position of leadership. It's the same question asked by a single parent who was abandoned by the father of her children. Where are you? The question asked by an abandoned child is the question asked by the pastors and the churches na kadalasan babae ang marami sa church at nangunguna sa church. At same na tanong ni Lord sa mga men in the household. Adan, nasan ka? Where are you? Si dito pa lang nagkaroon na ng um, problema. He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, sino may sabi sa yung hubotubad ka? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit and the tree from the tree, and I ate it. So, ayun na, pinasan niya na ang sisi sa babae. Imagine, maybe just a week ago, Sobra siyang na-amaze sa babaeng binigay sa kanya ng Lord. This is the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Parang actually yung, if you put it into our contemporary word, parang sinabi ni Adam doon, wow! Pero ngayon, after ng fall, siya po, siya po, ito po kasing babae na to na binigay niya sa akin, pinakain niya ako. Diba? Parang sounds familiar pa rin sa mga situation natin ng relationship ngayon, even our marriage. Okay. And the goal of Satan. Siyempre may goal si Satan dyan. Nagkaroon ng knowledge of evil ang tao. Every human born into this world has this. And this is our primary problem. Ito talaga yung diagnosis. Nagkaroon ng problema, ikaw tao, ito ang sakit mo. The knowledge of evil which we call sin. It is in every human being. We have this evil in us responding to what we see. And apart from God, we cannot get rid of it. Para tong virus na nakapasok sa computer eh, it affects every part 
of the computer. Di ba? Pag may virus na nakapasok, wala na. Lahat ng file na na-infect na niya. Na lagyan na ng problema. Sabi pa nga sa Roman 7, sabi ni Paul, So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. Gusto ko talagang sundin ang salita ng Lord. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. So napapansin niyo po ba din to sa sarili ninyo na alam mo yung salita ng Lord, gusto mong sumunod, pero nagagawa mo pa rin yung mga bagay na hindi dapat gawin at nagiging miserable ka. Sabi pa nga sa isang sikat na um, kanta, linya, gusto kong bumait pero di ko magawa. Inuulit mong gawin ang mga bagay na ayaw mong gawin. We can relate to Paul. Kasi meron na nga tayong knowledge of evil. At ito yung problema natin. This is our first problem. The second problem is this. One of the terrible consequences. And e, this is even the worst. We got separated from God. Because of sin, we were separated from God. Nahiwalay tayo sa Diyos. So, picture natin dito, pinalabas, pinalaya sila ng Diyos sa Garden of Eden. It's the exclusion from God's perfect blessing. Pinalayas at pinalagyan pa ng Lord ng Cherubim with the sword to guard the Eden. Yung sword na yan, it's, it's a flashing sword. Hindi ka talaga makakapasok dyan kasi talaga mamamatay ka pag pumasok ka dyan. It's guarded. So the virus of evil goes every part of our life. Nawala na ang innocence ng tao dahil nakurap na ng kasalanan. And we begin to see that it affects even our marriages, our family, our work. May strain ang mga relationships, may jealousy, may ingitan, may chismisan, yan, may siraan, the hostility. Human no longer sees God. Napalayas because of sin. So bakit pa kaya kailangan pala? Ang tanong natin dito, ba't hinayaan na lang, sana hinayaan na lang sila ni Lord sa Eden? Bakit pa kailangan palayasin sila sa Eden? Kasi nandun po yung tree of life. Diba? There's a tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was even still, itong pagpapalabas sa kanila ng Lord sa Eden, it was even a gesture pa rin of, it's an act of God's grace pa rin eh. Upang maiwasan na kainin ang bunga ng tree of life with the knowledge of good and evil. Kasi mahirap yung may knowledge na sila ng good and evil at nakain pa sila ng tree of life. Kasi pag kinain nila yun, forever na tayong may knowledge ng evil. And that would be the end of human race. Kaya nga ito, binabantayan ng cherubim, which with the flaming sword that represents the judgment of God, na kahit anong pilit nating bumalik, o kahit anong pilit ng tao bumalik sa Eden, bumalik sa presensya ng Lord, hindi niya kaya because he is confronted by the judgment of God. Man cannot get back. So this is the man's problem. This is the diagnosis. At ito ang problema natin. Ito ang problema mo. Ito ang problema ng mundo. Ito ang problema nating lahat. We have the knowledge of evil and we have the separation. We are separated from God. We are excluded from God's blessings. In our lifetime here on earth, apart from God, we can ne- we can never be recovered. We can never recover from the virus of sin. At binigay din yung mga consequences. Mabasa natin doon, ito dahil ginawa mo to, babae, kalaki. If you summarize it, the consequences is birth, in, birth is painful. When you deliver a baby, it's painful. I experience it myself. Masakit. Sobrang sakit mga anak. Kahit, siguro, kahit hindi lang siguro physical na birth eh. Pagpapalaki ng anak, hindi rin madali. Life is hard. Sobrang hirap ng buhay. Kailangan mo magtrabaho ng magtrabaho para 
may makain ka. Life is hard. Consequence ng fall of man yan. Consequence ng sin. Ang hirap ng buhay. Alam natin yan, lalo na sa panahon ngayon. And death is certain. Sigurado ang kamatayan. The ultimate, this is the ultimate and severest consequence of sin. Kamatayan. Sabi pa nga sa Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Ang bayad, ang kabayaran sa kasalanan ay kamatayan. At hindi lamang po ito physical death na hanggang sementeryo. This is eternal separation from God. Ito yung talagang sobrang pinakamahirap na consequence ng kasalanan. Hiwalay ka sa Panginoon. Nahiwalay ka sa Diyos. So, hindi na natin kailangan pang hintayin ang New Testament para ibigay ang gamot sa problema ito kasi meron din prescription. Okay? Ito na yung gamot, the antidote. God's wonderful message of hope. At ang pag-asa na ito, it begins at the very day when man was expelled from the garden. It was the very day when God pronounces the consequence. First, when God pronounces the curse. Cursed are you. Binigyan niya yung kay Satan in verse 14. Sa evil. Tingnan niyo yung sumpa. Direkta binigay niya sa satanas. So, paano naging hope po ito? Paano naging antidote? Paano naging prescription? Binigay niya ang curse sa evil. Ang destruction kay Satan. Dahil naipronounce na po ng Lord ang future defeat ni Satan. Dito pa lang sa Genesis 3. When God gave the consequence of sin, He also declared the future defeat of Satan. Sa Genesis, na-declare na ng Lord na si Satan is a defeated foe. And He also gave the curse to the, man, to, to the ground. Actually, it was not even directed to the man. In verse 17, sabi niya, Cursed is the ground because of you. Hindi niya direktang binigay yung sumpa at yung curse sa tao. Doon sa ground kung nasaan yung tao. Okay? Hindi niya direktang binigay ang curse. So, bakit sa lupa? Anong kasalanan ng lupa? Ba't yun ang, ang, yun ang sinumpa? At dito sa Genesis 3, makikita natin ang different side ng character ng Lord na hindi lumabas, na hindi pinakita sa Genesis 1 and 2. It is God's side of character that judges sin. It is His holy side of His character. The God of the Bible is the God who will always lead, deals with sin and destroys it. Yan ang Diyos. Wala siyang pinapalampas na kasalanan. Kailangan i-deal yan, kailangan may bayad yan. Wala pong pinapalampas. Ngunit marami pa rin sa atin ang gustong maniwala na God is so loving that He will just overlook my little faults. Ah, konti lang naman tong ano na to, kasalanan na to. Sige, magpatawa naman siguro ako ng Lord. Konti lang naman tong lapses ko, yung indiscretion ko. Little white lies, cheating, stealing, or secretly viewing pornography sasabihin mo maliit, nakasalanan lang naman ko eh. Hindi naman to kasing laki ng kasalanan ng kaibigan ko na na talagang malaki ang kinupit sa trabaho namin. O hindi naman to kasing laki ng kasalanan ng kilala ko na nangabit. Ito yung tinitingnan ko lang naman yung picture nung ano na to. Diba? Marami tayong mga excuses. Hindi naman siguro to worth of death. The problem is, sin is sin. Malaki o maliit, kasalanan. Though mahal tayo ng Diyos, His holiness is such that He cannot live with evil. God does not ignore sin. Hindi niya ini-ignore, ah. hindi, niya, hindi niya tinatakpan lang yung kasalanan natin at okay na yan, sige, maliit lang naman na kasalanan yan. Sige, patawarin, okay na yan. Hindi niya ini-ignore po yan. Kahit pa yung mga pinakatatago nating kasalanan sa ating puso, will one day be put or brought to light. Hebrews 4.13, nothing in all creation is hidden from God. In, is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare 
before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. And the only way to destroy sin was embed in the curse in Genesis 3.15. Ito napag-usapan na po natin to eh, last December, the first Christmas. Ang unang Pasko ay nasilaya nung pinagkaloob ng Diyos ang kaligtasan sa panahon na yung tao nahulog sa kasalanan. And this is our ultimate hope. The seed of the woman. This is the solution, the prescription, the antidote. Let's read that passage. Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The, under, the underlined word are hers and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The he there is the seed of the woman. He is described as the offspring of the woman. He will come and he will inflict a fatal blow to the head of the enemy. This is what happened on the cross. At sa Genesis pa lang, nasilayan na natin. Nasilayan na ng tao na may pag-asa. Though he will be bruised on his heel, he will crush the head of the enemy. Itong he will strike his heel, ito yung panahon na pinako nila si Kristo ng evil. Pero sa pagpako na yun, yun ang dudurog sa uli niya. Dahil ang tao hindi na makakapalik sa perfect place in Eden since they were driven out and was guarded by a cherubim with a flashing sword. This is the reason why Jesus came. Hindi tayo makapasok eh. Hindi tayo makabalik kay Lord. Si Jesus yung lumabas. Siya yung pumunta. He came out from the place of safety and blessing. Hindi siya driven out, hindi siya pinalabas. Siya yung lumabas. He is not driven out tulad ni Adam, but siya mismo yung lumabas sa paraiso para maging daan upang tayo makabalik sa presensya ng Diyos. So para makalabas, he must advance the sword that represents the flaming judgment and justice and wrath of God. So the sword na nagre-representa ng ating pagkawalay sa Diyos. When he went to the cross, it was also a picture of Jesus advancing for us against that judgment, against that sword. He cuts himself. It cuts him. It breaks him. But it made a way for us. Siya yung naging daan. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life upang tayo makapasok pabalik sa presensya ng Lord into the tree of life. We are all sinners deserving of hell for all our sin against the Holy God. Our sin has kept us from His presence and eternal life. Ito yung naglayo sa atin sa Diyos at pumigil sa atin at nag-stop na tayo magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. And no one can earn his or her way into the presence of God. Walang kaya talagang makapasok doon. Because there is no one righteous. Our best human efforts to please God are filthy rags. Kahit gano'n kapakabait, kung walang Jesus, basura po, basahan. Basahan yan yung mga good deeds natin sa harapan ng Diyos. Unless we understand the seriousness of our sins, we cannot truly appreciate the weight of God's ultimate act of grace and love in John 3.16. Hindi natin maunawaan kung gano'ng kaseryoso yung kasalanan natin. Gano'ng kaseryoso na ang consequence ng kasalanan na yan, na tayo talaga hiwalay sa Diyos, sobrang walang kwenta ang buhay ng wala hiwalay sa Diyos. Hindi natin ma-appreciate yung, uh, yung sacrifice ng Jesus, eh, ng Jesus Christ para sa atin. For God so loved the world that He gave. Kailangan may bayad yung kasalanan, siya mismo yung nagbigay ng paraan para tayo maligtas at kabalik sa Kanya. Deeper understanding of the bad news gives you better appreciation of the good news. You would not appreciate a stranger na biglang pumasok sa bahay mo at hinata ka palabas 
unless hindi mo ma-realize na nasusunog na pala ang bahay mo. So doon mo lang ma-appreciate, eh, sunog pala yung bahay ko, buti na lang hinatak niya ako. Pero hindi mo ma-appreciate yun, hindi mo naunawa na susunog na pala yung bahay mo. Magagalit ka pa doon sa humatak sa'yo. So until we understand that we are destined for hell because of our sin, we cannot appreciate all that Jesus did for us on the cross. If you don't realize how hopeless we are, we don't recognize the great hope Jesus offers. Remember the woman who offered a very um, expensive perfume. Yun ang pinampunas niya sa paanan ng Diyos. At yung mga self-righteous na mga disciples, nasayangan. Sayang naman yan. Isang buong taon mo na yung sweldo, ba't mo sinayang lang? Ba't doon tinuruan sila ni Jesus Christ na itong babaeng ito na-realize niya kung gano, gano kabigat ang kasalanan niya. At gano niya kanid ng Savior. Pero kayo, self-righteous eh. Akala niyo wala kayong kasalanan at sobrang bait kayo kasi palagi kayo nagsisimba, palagi kayo nagpipray. Unless we recognize that we are sinners, we can't appreciate a savior. Deeper understanding of the bad news gives you better appreciation of the good news. So this is the whole counsel of God. God's whole counsel includes the good, the bad news, both the bad news and the good news state. That about the natural, the bad news about our natural state and the good news about God's plan to redeem us. So, pag mag-share tayo ng gospel, isama po natin yung bad news para ma-appreciate na may good news pala. Jesus never eliminated either of these when He brought peace on earth, goodwill toward men. His peace is available to everyone who is brought to repentance by the bad news and joyfully accepts the good news that He is the Lord of all. At kahit bad things ang nararanasan natin sa panahon ngayon, ma-appreciate po natin ang hope na meron tayo kay Kristo. And when we reach into that deeper appreciation of the good news, we must also give, it must also give us the urgency to share this gospel to others. Na hindi lang lugmok ang tao sa bad news sa state ng tao ngayon. Kasi may pag-asa. At tayo'y parte po ng redemptive work ni Cristo. That, and that He calls us to take part of it. To take part in the restoration. Don't just be a secret agent Christian na ikaw lang nakakaalam at kayo lang. You don't really um, express this kind of redemptive work. You don't extend this kind of redemptive work to others. We are called and we are commanded by God to take part. Let us share this message of hope to others. And kahit ikaw mismo, sabihin mo na ha, ako nga mismo nahihirapan ngayon eh. Paano ko isi-send yung, i-extend yung hope na ito sa ibang tao? Na kahit ikaw mismo, even if you're reminded by the reality of the bad news, you can still appreciate the good news because of His grace for us. Kahit mahirap ang buhay, life may be hard, but God is still good. Because we have Jesus, we have our Savior. The deeper understanding of the bad news gives us better appreciation of the good news. Let us pray. Panginoon, nagpapasalamat po kami kasi pinaunawa niyo po sa amin ang bigat ng kasalanan na meron kami. The weight of our sin which we cannot afford, Lord God, to pay. And you, but you have, you have made the way, Lord God, to pay for that sin when you have sent Jesus Christ for us. Help us, Lord, to really appreciate the salvation we have in Jesus. And to recognize na hindi lamang siya Savior, but He is also our Lord. You are also our Lord, Lord God. We don't just have a friend, but we have a God. 
we have a Lord, we have a Father that we must reverently fear and obey. And also pray, Lord God, na itong good news na ito, itong gospel na ito, maibahagi din namin sa mga nalulugmok at nahihirapan. Kahit sa mga kapatira namin, Panginoon. Kahit sa mga kapitbahay namin, katrabaho at kakilala namin. Help us, Lord, not to be a Christian who is self, who is entitled of these blessings It's just because we are your children. But Lord, we want to be like Jesus who is also selfless, who also sacrifices for others, who also shares, who also forgives, and who also loves. Salamat, Panginoon, sa mensahe ninyo sa amin. Nawa kami ay mag-take ng initiative, Lord God, to extend the same love that you have given to us, to other people. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless us all.